What's up, everybody? Welcome to All Gas, All Georgia Sports. I'm glad you are here. Going to be an interesting episode today. So um, I've been out of town for a few days now and just got back from the beach. Went to the beach with a bunch of friends. It's good to do that from time to time. Make sure you guys get out with your friends. Go and have uh, some fun. We've got about 14 guys that all went to Destin this weekend, and we do it every year. It's great. I don't even really like Destin or Panama City for that matter. Um, I don't really understand the insistence on going there, but you know, I'm not particularly a beach guy, so I don't want to, you know, be a buzzkill or a bummer. But what I enjoy is hanging out with everybody, and it was a great time. But I'm exhausted. I have gotten maybe ten hours of sleep combined for the last three days. And so, yeah, I just got back. I have no idea how this episode is going to go. This might be a 10-minute episode. This might be an hour long. I have absolutely no clue, but I'm going to muscle my way through this the best that I can. So I say all that, you know, this may or may not be as structured as it normally is. I like to come prepared with, you know, a bunch of takes on how the games went over the weekend or from the last episode. I like to... um you know, have some trivia prepared. I did get some for you guys. I like to have different segments, different tweets that I've saved. So I've done what I can here, but I'm going to I'm gonna get right into it here. Um, basically, this episode, uh, we are going to cover, I mean, mainly the Braves, because there's a lot of Braves baseball to talk about. A lot of Braves baseball I didn't get to watch, which was super bummed because we tried to, we tried to get the game on down in Florida, but for whatever reason we couldn't. I, I wouldn't have thought that uh, Destin, you know, wouldn't have regional coverage of the Braves, but apparently they didn't. So that was a bummer, but I was kind of, you know, I was tracking it on like the uh, the stat tracker, you know, if you just Google Braves or if you go to ESPN or wherever, uh, you can do the play-by-play, you can do the, um, I can't remember what it's called, I literally can't think right now. Uh, yeah, the game cast, that's what it is. Game cast where you can like see these little like, you know, cartoon silhouettes of, um, you know, these, the, the pitcher and the, and the batter, and it'll show you kind of each pitch play by play, but it's, it's kind of hilarious. But I was like watching the games like that and was quite upset about it for the most part, except for the one game that we won. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll get into that more. We're going to get into some Braves. Um, I'm going to get into as much Falcons or Bulldogs or what, you know, any news that I can. Um, and yeah, you know what, you guys make sure you're getting out there and having a good time. My wife, big shout out to my wife. She stayed back with the kid this weekend. She was totally okay with it. Um, and actually right before I left, we had a very unhappy and, uh, sick baby in the house and, um, you know, she's fine, but it was, uh, Yeah, not a lot of sleep going into the trip, and then not a lot of sleep while I was out there. So, uh, yeah, thank you to my wife for sticking it out and being cool with me going to do that. I need to go and reset with with the boys from time to time. So, fellas, shout out. Great weekend. I know I was just bitching about Panama City and Destin. I did have a great time. Um, Just not really a beach guy, although I will say, in my opinion, Destin is better than Panama City. I think it's a nicer place. Um, you know, I think a lot of people would agree with that, but yeah, it was good. It was fun. It was fine. It was a good time and excited that I went glad that I went and let's get into it. So the first trivia question for the day is what college did Warwick Dunn go to Atlanta Falcons legend Warwick Dunn? Great man. Great person. We're going to go over a little bit of what Warwick Dunn has done for the community at the end of the episode, but um, just wanted to give him a little bit of love. It's Falcons-themed this week because we have our first Falcons preseason game on Friday. It has begun, and really excited about that. And what's even cooler is that there's only three preseason games. So even though we've had to wait a little bit longer to get our first preseason action, um we have less preseason games to go until the regular season starts because usually there's four. I can't remember if they did three last year or two 
or if this is the first year they're doing that. I want to say they only did three last year as well, maybe because of the extended season. I think that's correct. So anyways, we're starting this Friday. Friday night in Detroit at 6 p.m. Who knows how much we're going to see. I actually have a feeling that we're probably going to see a lot more people than we might think, only because this whole team's new. I mean, we've got, we have some people coming back, but we've got so many new guys, it's like, I have no idea how this is going to go. But um, usually, historically, by game three is when you see the starters play like a full half. And not sure if that's going to be the same, you know, cycle for starters playing in the preseason just since we have less games, but I imagine we're going to see a good bit of our first team uh, in game two. Usually game two, you see a quarter, in the, or like a drive at least, maybe a couple drives. Uh, game three, you usually see a little bit more. So anyways, enough about what's about to happen in the preseason, and more on to what's happening right now. So the Braves uh, are now six and a half games back. We just lost four out of five to the Mets. Um, don't even really know where to start with this. I mean, there's a lot of games to cover because since the last episode, there's been four games. Um, the Braves lost Friday, which we've already covered. And Friday was actually, it was a good game. I mean, really. Uh, and then the Braves won 9-6 on Friday. And then yesterday was a doubleheader and we lost both. First game was 8-5. Second game was 6-2. And tonight on Sunday... Uh, it was 5-2, so big time bummer. We're now six and a half games back, um, which is really not what we wanted going into this series. This was a big time series because, you know, uh, it, I mean, well, it was against the Mets. So yeah, it was huge. And we, were, we came into the series minus three and a half. And so, you know, theoretically, I mean, yeah, if we had won all five, then we would have jumped up five games. But um, even if we took three, if we'd taken three or two, we would have gained one game. I always forget the math on here, but... If we had won four out of five, we would have come up to like half a game, something like that. Anyways, uh, worst case scenario, almost the worst, <coughs> excuse me, almost the worst case scenario, which is we lost, yeah, four out of five. So anyways, um, that sucked big time. I mean, what can you say? The pitching was great for the Mets. DeGrom was perfect through five today. Um, I'm just going to look at some stats real quick from today, see if there's anything notable. Swanson did uh, hit a home run off DeGrom, two run shot. So, I mean, you know, hey, if anything, Swanson, keep that ball if you can, because um, that's pretty cool. But Spencer Strider, he went, oh, God, two innings, six hits, four earned runs. I feel like all of our pitching just got smacked around this week. I mean, I've been saying this for uh, weeks now. It's just pitching, 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 pitching. And the Mets, they, 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 they've got us there right now. And we have good pitchers. It's not like they have that big of a separation of talent amongst their pitching, in my opinion. It's just that right now they're on fire, and they have been for like a month now. Because even when, you know, we, we've honestly, we haven't done bad since the All-Star break. We played really good baseball. But the Mets just kept winning. They would not stop winning. So that sucks. Um, and actually, too, what's even scarier well, I, I, I wouldn't say scarier, but what's also scary is that now the Phillies are only three games behind us in the NL East. So, <laughs> yeah, we better get it together. Um, there's There were some good encouraging quotes from some Braves players after the game today, after the Sunday game. Um, but, you know, just a little preview of what's ahead for us here. Um, starting on Tuesday, so Tuesday and Wednesday, we're in Boston. We go to Boston. And we have off on Thursday. So they got a couple days off this week. So maybe they need that to reset a little bit. But we go to Boston for two games, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then uh, starting Friday, we go to Miami for four games. And then, boom, Monday, next Monday. Is that right? Is that a week from now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Next Monday on the 15th, the Mets come to Atlanta for a four-game series. So a good chance for us to get some redemption there. But <laughs> there you go. Morning. Um, after the Mets, we then have the Astros coming to town for three games. So we got a tough schedule. Then we got three against the Pirates, three against the Cardinals, the Rockies, you know, Rockies would be fine. So it gets a little bit easier once we get into September. Um, yeah, September is definitely looking a lot easier. We do end the season with three against the Mets and three against the Marlins. So, I mean, it's only August. Um, but yeah, you know, August comes around. My only hope here is that, you know, August... And this is how it was last year, but August is the month usually where 
I mean, I would just imagine, I've heard this from interviews and I've heard this from broadcasters about how August is really brutal for teams mentally and physically because it's still so freaking hot. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, you're, you're just in the dog days of summer. The fatigue by the time August comes around has got to be just next level. But that's where the great teams separate themselves from the good teams is the teams who can lock it in for these last two months because, yeah, man, we're worn out. We also have Ozzy Albies coming back pretty soon, supposedly. I'm going to look that up while I'm actually talking about this. Um, and also Mike Soroka. So let's see, Ozzy Albies, when, when are you coming back, buddy? Ozzy Albies return. Um, we need him. Hoping mid to late August. Uh, yeah, okay. Mid to late August. I had heard like August 16th for both of those guys, for him and Soroka. Really excited for Soroka to come back. Um, Mike Soroka. Let's get a little Mike Soroka update too. So mid to late August for Ozzy Albies. Don't have a date off the top of my head or at the top of this quick search. Mike Soroka return. Where are you at here, buddy? Mike Soroka. Let's go. Finally got some good news about Mike Soroka. This was three days ago from Fansided. The Atlanta Braves received some good news regarding starting pitcher Mike Soroka, who was working his way back from Achilles injury, and of course it cuts off. i got to go to the link. Sorry about that. Um... <sighs> Mike Soroka's getting closer. Yada Mike Soroka... Uh, will soon begin simulated games, Snickers said. Soroka is working his way toward rehab assignment. That was on August 4th. Uh, so he was... What a dumb article. Okay, it's done right away. Boom. That's all we got. It's done. Thanks, fansided. Okay. Sure we... Have... Yeah, no, that was it. That was dumb. Super dumb. It's unknown exactly when Soroka will begin his full re... Okay, well, we don't know anything. So anyways, they should be coming back soon. I'd heard at one point it was like August 16th, but I haven't heard any news since then, and that was a few weeks ago. Um, okay, here's one from, well, that's from July. Yeah, this is dumb. Okay, thanks, Google. So, uh, the Braves, you know, to tell you the truth, I've already gone through all the ups and downs emotionally with this. Um, I, you know, earlier today, I was like, Braves are done. We're over. We're screwed. We're going to lose. We're not going to make the playoffs. You know, better luck next year. And now, I'm like, yeah, it's August. We're okay. Chill out. You know, I got some time to reflect, to relax, to think back through historically what the Braves have done, at least over the last five years. This is a good team. And I've heard, I've heard a lot of people giving Brian Snicker a hard time lately, going, oh, yeah, classic Snicker. He's not going to do anything good or valuable or important during a game. Like, are you kidding? Like, we literally just won a World Series, large in part due to his leadership. And actually, this season specifically, what happened? Earlier in the year, we were sucking. We go out to Arizona. And he gives a speech, fires up the clubhouse, says something. Don't know what he said. Love to see footage of that speech. But he said something to the guys. And then we went on to have statistically the best June in franchise history. And we're not a new franchise. So, yeah, Snickers fine. The Braves are fine. The Mets are just really good. It's just time to give them credit. I've been trying to do that, I think, for the last few weeks. Um, but it's just abundantly clear, and it was abundantly clear when they first came to Atlanta. Well, not when they first came to Atlanta, but it was right around the All-Star break, maybe right before or right after, but they came to Atlanta, and it became abundantly clear that their pitching was just fantastic. And ours, at the moment, is a notch behind. And, I mean, what else are you going to do? You're going up against DeGrom tonight. They got Scherzer. They got some dudes, for sure. But... Um, there's a lot of baseball to be played. Got some awesome quotes by Spencer Strider, uh, hilarious quotes by him. We're going to get into later, but, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what to say other than that. It's just tough weekend, you know, tough weekend for the Braves, tough weekend for the fans. Definitely a lot of overreacting going on and, you know, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. You know, people who think this is not a big deal, like, oh, this is totally fine. Like kind of like what I just said. That's not entirely true. I mean, no, this was a big deal. This was a big series. You know, we just dropped that back to six and a half games back. That all of a sudden feels like, uh-oh, like now they have pretty much secured the first place spot for like a long time. So even if we win the next six and they lose the next six, it's going to be a week and a half for that to happen, and we'll still be a half game back. So anyways, 
you know, that's a substantial lead. And now our lead on the Phillies has gotten a lot smaller, which is weird to think about. Uh, let me look up the uh, NL wild card standings here real quick. NL wild card. Because last time I looked, we had a pretty sizable lead there too. Um, but a lot can change over a weekend when you drop four or five. So uh, wild card standings. Um, that page is blank. That's tight. That's tight. That's tight. Wild card ESPN. Boom, boom. Let's go. Let's go. Wild card. American League. National League. Atlanta Braves are in first place in the wild card. They're three and a half games up um, on the Phillies, who are in second place. Oh, wow. And the Phillies are only a half a game up of the San Diego Padres, um, who just got loaded, got stacked. Yeah, the Philadelphia Phillies are 9-1 and one over their last 10 games. So they're getting hot. And we are three games ahead of them in the wild card standings and three games ahead, obviously, in, in the NL East as well. So, you know, but honestly, so we're three and a half on top of the Padres. And then the next closest team were, is the Brewers, and we're five games up on them. And then that would mean that we were 11 and a half games up on fifth place Giants. And good God, you know, what would that be? Uh, 11 and a half, 21 games in front of the Marlins? I, I, that might be real, actually. So, wild card is still very much within our grasp. Um, and I think that we're going to at least get that. But we can still take the NL East because there is there is legitimately a lot of baseball to be left. And a lot of people are going to reference, you know, where were, were we at? Where were we at this time last year? That is valid to fall back on and to remember. However, the Mets are clearly a far and away better team this year than they were last year. You know, last year they were just crumbling and falling apart. This year, it feels different. They got a lot of momentum. Um, you know, this might be the year to take the East. And if so, that's okay because we can still get the wild card and October is when it matters. And, we'll, you know, it's that's an entirely different brand of baseball right there. And if you don't believe me, just watch any playoff game ever and watch any footage of what it was like at the Battery last October. Oh, my God, it was so cool. It was so electric. Amazing. Unbelievable. Best thing ever. One of the – maybe – I don't know if there's – there aren't – I mean, percentage-wise, there's not many better atmospheres in the world than Truist Park in the Battery last fall. You know, I mean, sure, soccer in England, you know, they throw down, for sure. College football, legit. There's some NFL teams and fan bases that are absolutely insane and rabid, but it's a small list of things that are equal or better than what the Battery experienced last fall. So excited to see that happen again, and the Braves just got to get it together. That's it. So, okay, we're going to move on. And, uh, you know, yeah. Let's just keep supporting them. I mean, I think we're going to keep showing up at home. We always do. Um, so, anyways, on to some NFL. Let's go on to some tweets, actually. Let's see. What did I save here? Like I said, you guys, this, this today's episode is going to be, you know, um, a little scattered. So, I appreciate you sticking it out with me. Okay, here you go. This is pretty fun. Um, Spencer Strider, after, uh, after the game, he was like, yeah, they seem to be having a lot of luck right now offensively. That's great. It's August. We'll see what things are like in October. Hell yeah. That's awesome. I love that. Thank you for saying that, Spencer Strider. It's one of those things that, like, you know, a lot of us can say that. I mean, a lot of people on Twitter, myself including, I'll say things like that. But in the next breath, I'll go, you know, I'll say something totally different. But when a player says stuff like that, um, like I saw a video the other day of Chipper Jones saying something in, oh, God, it was in the 90s in the playoffs, and he basically just had a press conference kind of like that. And I don't even know who he was referencing, but he basically said something to the effect of, yeah, that's cute that they can win at home, but they got to come to Atlanta, and they're not going to beat us there. And when a player, when you really see a player just kind of let loose like that and say, yeah, you know, cute, they're getting lucky right now and getting some good calls, uh, but it's only August. We'll see what happens. It's just badass. So thank you, Spencer Strider. Um, oh, here's a video that's going around. If you just Google right now, Jordan Davis, what's likely going to pop up is him at practice and it was like, you know, a, uh, you know, fans can attend practice day in Philly. 
And Jordan Davis is just absolutely demolishing this offensive lineman. Um, he's pushing this guy back. Like, he keeps having to jump. I'm watching this thing on repeat right now. He, he's pushing this uh, offensive lineman back for the Phillies, and he keeps having to jump back in order to try and brace himself against the just overpowering strength of Jordan Davis. Um, I can't stand the Eagles, but I'm, you know, they've got a number of Georgia players now because uh, Kobe Dean went there, right? Kobe Dean, he's uh, he's an Eagle. Is that right? That's right. Let's check it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. The voice is gone too, just in case you haven't noticed that. But um, yeah, and Kobe Dean, Jordan Davis, Davis, two of my favorite guys from last year on that team. So they're both of the Eagles. So I'm pulling for them. Um, but him, him, him pushing that dude back is hilarious. It's like he's going against a child. It's truly like as if you're, you're, you know, your nephew, your your child, younger, you know, niece is like, hey, let's play football, and you go, okay, and you just shove him ten feet back face first into the ground. That's what Jordan Davis just did to that guy. So pretty cool. Austin Riley after the game says, uh, obviously it wasn't what we wanted, but it's baseball at the end of the day. You got to flush it and move on. Yeah, sure. That's right. That's correct. Okay. Um, oh, here's another, uh, um, Spencer Strider quote here. This is from Justin Toscano at Justin C. Toscano. Strider on why the Mets are so good at grinding out ABs. I don't know. It helps when they're getting calls and 1-1 one, one counts turn into 2-1 two, counts instead of 1-2 counts and stuff like that. When your BA, BIP is 330, 340 as a team, it's tough to get quick innings and quick outs. What in the hell is BA, BIP? Okay, here you go. Come on, Google. BA, BIP, baby. Meaning. Uh, oh, God. Baseball. B-A-B-I-P is batting average on balls in play. It was really designed to, me to measure a pitcher's ability to prevent hits on balls in play. Okay, so that wasn't totally a shot. They're putting balls in play and their batting average is high on those. So, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, when you're batting average is 330, 340 when that's your stats. Yeah, it's tough to get quick innings. So, yeah, um, but he took a shot at the refs at the refs, at the umpires, and I didn't see it, man, I, you know, my wife, as soon as I got home, my wife told me about some egregious call on Dansby Swanson, where he turned around and basically was like, what the hell was that, dude, um, she said it was really bad, but yeah, I didn't get to watch any of these, I'm so sorry, guys, I, I, I'm literally, I'm recording this episode because I just wanted to be consistent and get you guys some content, so, um, yeah, I, you know, if you watched it, I mean, comment. Let me know what it was like. Let me know if anything you saw. Apparently on Sunday, there was a call against Dansby Swanson that was just absolutely ridiculous and that there was a number of them. Apparently there was enough of those that, well, Spencer Strider was mentioning it, but my wife had mentioned it too. And she doesn't watch it as closely as I do or is probably not as closely as you guys do. So, yeah, if she noticed it, it must have been pretty bad. Um... Nothing from Georgia Bulldogs that I can see that's notable or worth saying, except for the fact that we're like, I don't know, less than three weeks away from college football. Are we three weeks away? What's the date? Today is Monday the 8th. Well, for me, it's Sunday the 7th, Monday the 8th. One, two, three. Okay, about what's that? Three, basically, one, two, three. In three weeks, we are going to be prepping for the first games in college football, unless I think there's some games maybe out west that usually start a week before. I remember that happened last year. I, um, you know, those games don't really blow my skirt up that much. Uh, you know, it's really that first game of like SEC football, you know, when everything's really up and running. That's when I get really hyped. And actually, it kind of sucks because um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the UGA game, the first UGA game of the year, is like a week after everyone else plays. Um, UGA football schedule. Yeah, I think they're playing like literally a week after. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. They're, they're September 3rd at 3.30. Um, when does college... Um, 
Okay, yeah, Nevada, New Mexico State are on August 27th. And then Austin P in Western Kentucky, August 27th. So the number of games on August 27th, um, yeah, who cares? I mean, you know, I, I do. I mean, that's the Saturday. Okay, okay, that is correct. So Georgia does start a week after the rest of college football. That does suck um, because, you know, there's going to be a lot of college football buzz going around. But then, you know, it's weird. Like that August 27th weekend, though, there's not really any – I mean, Vanderbilt plays Hawaii. Florida State plays on August 27th. Um, we got like UConn and Utah State, Wyoming and Illinois. Ida. So, yeah, it's some weird games. I mean, Nebraska, Northwestern is on August 27th. Nebraska versus Northwestern, not Nebraska, Northwestern. So, yeah, August 27th is when college football starts. Then September 1st, we've got like Ball State in Tennessee, West Virginia, Pittsburgh. So, okay. And that's like uh, in the middle of the week, it looks like, actually. It's on a Thursday, so that's strange. Thursday night college football. You know, they're probably just trying to rush out games. They can feel the tension. They can feel our excitement, you guys. So, um, but September 3rd really is like, I mean, that's when... That's when we could start it, September 3rd. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da, da -da -da. Yeah, we got Michigan starting that, that weekend, that Saturday. Maryland, Rutgers, Michigan, UNC, Northern Iowa, <laughs> Oklahoma, Miami. Okay, yeah, so September 3rd. So no, so they're, not, they're not starting. I mean, they're starting a week, but a lot of people are starting a week after other teams. So yeah, uh, Georgia, Oregon. I mean, I think Georgia's going to smash Oregon, but knock on wood, I know we're not in the Mark Richt era anymore. However, um, you know, be careful, because what was it? Georgia, it might have been Oregon. No, it was Boise, uh, Boise State, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was like back in 2011 when we had Isaiah Crowell and we had those god-awful uniforms. Remember those like silver and red kind of like color rush before color rush was a thing? Um. And it was, you know, primetime game, first game of the season, and we got smacked around by Boise State. That sucked. So, yeah, hey, not to put bad vibes out there. Knock on wood. Maybe you can hear that. Um, but I think we'll be fine because, you know, Georgia's just, I mean, we're the champs now. <coughs> According to Kirby, we will not be hunted. We will be doing the hunting. Yes, sir. Um, so Falcons preseason starts this week. Get excited. Uh, Going to do a little Warwick done here. Um, actually, before we do that, any other Falcons news worth mentioning here? Uh, we did pick up a new defensive signing, <laughs> another Bears player. This is getting actually pretty egregious. Uh, so the Atlanta Falcons just um, picked up Abdullah Anderson on a one-year deal, and the fourth-year veteran stands six foot three, two hundred ninety-seven pounds, play, experienced playing in the NFC North. He's he's played for the Bears mainly. Um, and his experience with the Bears, he signed in Chicago in 2018 when current Falcons executive Ryan Pace was the Bears' GM. And he signed with the Bears back in 2018 as an undrafted free agent. This is from AtlantaFalcons.com. And, um, yeah, Ryan Pace, dude, you do know that there are, like, other teams that you can poach from. That's totally fine. You know, you can dip out west, you know, maybe dip into the AFC a little bit, dip your toes in the water. It might be warm. You might be surprised. You know, there's some good NFC West players out there. But the Bears, I mean, they haven't really been that good. So content, this is like the literally like the tenth Bears player that the Falcons have signed in the last year. Some of them have been great. I'm hyped about Damian Williams to tell you the truth because I don't really consider him like a Bears player. I saw I really got to know him when he was at KC, and yeah, that was a few years ago. But I'm hyped about him. You know, Cordero Patterson, obviously. He's great. He's been a, an amazing addition. He's had literally the best year of his entire career was last year with the Falcons. So, yeah, good job on bringing him over. But, I mean, we've got like 10 ex-Bears, and it's like, right, Mr. Pace, sir, sir, please um, look outside the NFC North because uh, you might be surprised at what you'll find. There are some other good – you know, come on, Terry Fontenot, although I can't really – talk any trash just yet we'll see what happens this year because I, I, I really do like what this feels like I, I tweeted the other day I said um the Falcons are going 10 and 7 fight me I believe that to my core I believe the Falcons are going 10 and 7 Falcons will be 10 and 7 this year why why is that I don't know maybe it's an attitude thing maybe it's just a grit thing maybe they just have that thing that I feel like we've lacked and what is that thing it's just you know those intangibles those things that uh the vibe of the coach 
Arthur Smith, I trust Arthur Smith. He's a business guy. He doesn't really, te- he seems, he doesn't seem like he's that friendly to the media. Or he's that like, you know, at points, Dan Quinn, he started seeming like insecure out there. You know, and maybe he was. And I'm a Dan Quinn fan. I like him. But clearly something was off with those guys mentally because they, they would do things that were so stupid um, before he left. And Arthur Smith, yeah, last year watching his play calling and watching him handle himself in situations in tight games, it was really cool. Because there, I didn't have really many head scratchy moments with those guys. You know what I mean? Situationally, I had plenty of that with Dan Quinn, but with Arthur Smith, I have not had a whole lot of head scratching type moments. And yeah, I think that's going to carry over. I have no reason to think otherwise, but I believe that it will. And he just gives me confidence. And it's just the way that he talks. Literally, it's because of the way that he talks. I like the way that he talks. And so because of that, we're going ten and seven. That's it. Take it to the bank. Um, I mean, I will, I guess, for this uh, Abdullah Anderson signing. He was with Chicago, but he's also played with Green Bay and Minnesota and I think a brief stint in Tennessee. We just need some depth on the line. You know, what's-his-face, you know, signed with us, and they were pretty excited because he was a former, I don't know if it was all pro, but a former pro bowler who signed with us at 28 years old. Can't remember his name now. I did a whole segment on him uh, a month ago after we signed him. But then he, you know, two weeks after he signed with the Falcons, he said, I quit. I'm done. I'm not coming in on Monday. Um, you know, and I'm happy for him, I guess. So, hey, if your heart's not in it, if you know you want to go, then go. Do your thing. So, anyways, Falcons news is that we did that. So, there you go. Kind of a slow news day for that. Um, I know that some coaches are impressed with the tight end from our very own UGA. Hope we start signing some more SEC guys. I mean, it's cool when, like, um, we find talent from like small schools, but it felt like our only draft picks for a while with Dan Quinn was from like, you know, Colorado state or like San Diego state, you know, and like schools that have had some really good NFL players before. But, um, I'm like, why aren't you guys taking these like sec linemen, you know, like, why aren't you guys taking these, um, Bulldogs players that are coming out of college and they're just studs right away. Um, we just, we don't really sign, we we were signing some, um, LSU players and some, uh, Gators, you know, we got Keanu Neal and then we got Deion Jones. So defensively we got some SEC guys, but man, I'm like, I don't know why every year the first round isn't just only consisting of just SEC linemen. I mean, they're so good. They're so much better than the rest of college football. Um, but what do I know? Uh, let's see. Any other Falcons news? Felipe Franks is making a lot of headlines, at least around camp, about his uh, hybrid ability. He's uh, They're putting him a lot in at tight end. And when you watch videos, he's really fast. I mean, he's quick. He's running good routes. He's making good catches. Great athlete. And he's really tall. I mean, he, he might actually be like six, I don't know, seven or something like that. He's really tall. Um, so, yeah, he's been making, I think the Falcons just want tall receivers. That's kind of their only thing they're going for right now. Avery Williams is now uh, impressing at camp. He was a cornerback last year, and they moved him to running back. Apparently, he's doing good. He can catch. He's fast. He's shifty. So, um, yeah, maybe I just like the whole kind of replacements vibe that this team has right now, especially with Cordero Patterson, like playing all these different positions, moving Avery Williams, having Felipe Franks. I mean, that's cool, man. That's really cool. Um, the other thing I was going to say is that, uh, what was the tight end that we drafted out of Georgia? Uh, John Fitzpatrick, uh, tight ends coach says he's a very smart player. They think that he's going to be really good. And he was our last draft pick, I think. So that'd be pretty cool. Get a little UGA love going. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, and we're going to end with a little Warwick Dunn love here. So Warwick Dunn, um, the trivia question is, to circle back around on this, what college did Warwick Dunn, Atlanta Falcons legend, play for? And Warwick Dunn is a alumni of the Florida State Seminoles, Florida State. Um, and he was drafted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 12th overall in the 97 draft. I didn't realize he was that high of a draft pick, um, but... It makes sense. He certainly lived up to the hype because he had a great 12-year career. Drafted 12th overall, had a 12-year career. I mean, how often do you see running backs having that long of a career? So really cool. He was the Offensive Rookie of the Year at 97, earned three Pro Bowl nods, and 
Oh, I didn't know this. After his playing career, this is just straight off of Wikipedia, um, but Work Done took a min- minority stake in the Falcons' ownership. So he is a uh, Falcons stakeholder. Um, but he played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And bummer for him, I mean, honestly, is he, he was great with the Bucs. And then he ended up, um, let's see, uh, great with the Bucs. And then he went to Atlanta in 2 but that was the year that the Bucks won the Super Bowl. So the year after he left the Bucks, they won a Super Bowl. So bummer for him for not getting to experience that at least. But I'm so glad he came here because he was such an electric player with us. That, those years when it was like DVD, Dunn, Vic, Duckett. Um, God, he was awesome. I mean, it was like he had Warwick Dunn was kind of our main guy. And then TJ Duckett would come in just to like punch people in the face and then Warwick Dunn would finish the job. But um yeah, man, he was so good, and he's done so many great things uh, just outside of football. Um, his big thing was building homes for uh, single mothers, and actually, um, a lot of Deshaun Watson news right now, but um, Deshaun Watson was actually a beneficiary of one of the homes that worked unbuilt, so... Uh, Dunn established the Homes for the Holidays uh, program in 1997, and in 2002, as a way to grow services, due to the Homes for Holidays, presented single-parent families uh, with their first-time homes, so like they helped them reach first-time home, home ownership, so he built homes for these like single mothers, and one of those homes that he built was for Deshaun Watson's mom, um, and that was in 06. And so, I mean, yeah, the guys, I mean, but I mean, that's just like, what a cool and creative way to be of service in your community. Um, I don't know anyone else who's done anything quite like that. There's a lot of, you know, wonderful work that NFL players have done in their communities. JJ Watt comes to mind, uh, but those things really are important. And, you know, I look at those guys and you look at, you know, a lot of these athletes, I believe, think that they are, you know, and a lot of them have like good charitable organizations and they do a lot of great stuff, you know, with their money. And I, and I applaud them for that. Um, but you see so much about like, you know, guys on social media and getting really involved politically. I don't really care about any of that. I'm like, I truly just don't. I mean, it's, it's, I get kind of annoyed sometimes, I think when it's too frequent, just cause it's like, dude, you guys, come on, like, who, what are you doing? But like these, you know, a guy like work done, he was out there really doing things that really mattered. He was um, boots on the ground type of guy who, I mean, he put, you know, single parent families in houses who couldn't do it otherwise. And so, you know, just thanks work, you know, thank you for what you've done for the city and thank you for investing your time, money, energy, and just, you know, mental capacity towards doing things like that. So really, really cool. He went to Florida state. That's the answer to your trivia question. And if you want to have some fun, just go YouTube some work done highlights because the dude was a beast. So anyways, I'm going to wrap this episode up. Go out there and make someone's day today. Let's get ready to have a great week. And on Wednesday's episode, I will be fully energized and ready to go. So thank you if you've made it this far for bearing with me while I am um, absolutely, completely exhausted and sleep deprived. And I'm going to go pass out and wake up on Monday, listen to this episode, and hopefully have a smile on my face while I do, because if so, that means I was not a complete idiot today. So anyways, um, thank you for listening. Please email us at talkingallgas at gmail.com. That's talkingallgas at gmail.com. I'd love to hear your thoughts. love to hear any comments you have on the episode or anything that I covered that you might think is stupid. Uh, let me know. Let me know why. If, you, if anything that you agree with, let me know that too, because that's cool. Um, but uh, shout out to my boys out there uh, that I just had an awesome weekend with. Um, Yeah, man. Drew, Jared, D-Money, Gabe, Robbie, Aaron, David, Jeff, John, Zach, Davo. Make sure I don't forget anybody. Um, AT, love you, buddy. Uh, There's someone else. Literally think of forgetting one person, it's gonna drive me crazy. But uh Drew, there it is. So, um, love you guys. Awesome time. Have a great week. Till next time. See ya.